Britain, and, and it's so beautiful and astounding and explosive. Um, anyway, I can, I, I can tell quite rightly you are shatteringly bored by me talking about Wagner, but um, there you are. There may be a few Wagner rights in the audience. C can I? No, oh, a few, thank you. <laughs> Good. Can I just, sorry, can I skip X for a second and replace it with picking up something that you just mm. said about the letter from Isaiah Berlin? Mm. Why is it that a, a, an Irishman can make Irish jokes, a Jew can write mm. about the Holocaust? Why is the author of an artwork's identity important to the you're so right. It's very peculiar that you, you mentioned uh, when we were talking about Hitler that my book, Making History, it received a, a complete savaging at the hands of the New York Times uh, literary reviewer. I happened to be in New York when it was out. And I don't re read them, so I didn't know this. But I, uh, 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 a friend of a friend who had become a friend, Brett Easton Ellis, the novelist, uh, uh, was at a party and he came up to me and said, <laughs> give me a hug. I said, what, 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 what? He said, you managed to get a worse review than American Psycho. Whoa! <laughs> I said, oh no, really, is it a disaster? He said, whoa, whoa, it's a stinker. You made, <laughs> you made fun of the Holocaust. You laughed at the dead Jews. I said, oh my God, does she think that? Does she honestly think I'm making light of the Holocaust? What, I mean, you know, and I sort of went like that and, and said, but as a Jew, do you think I could hold up my hand to my friends and, and family? Who are, he said, are you, are you Jewish? I said, well, yeah, sort of. My mother is, so I kind of am. Yeah, I'm not religiously so, but yeah. I mean, Hitler would think I was. You know, he, he put me in the oven with the others, whether I liked it or not. So, you know, I mean, if, a, if, if an ant, yeah, I might as well say, yes, I am. He went, oh, like that. So, so I think he told her, and my opinion, uh, anyway, she then wrote a review of my next book, in, I think it was my next book, which was uh, my autobiography, Moab is my washbot, in which she described making history as a, as a sadly misjudged, uh, people, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks, but, uh, <laughs> but it, it, it did set me thinking that it's an odd thing, um, you know, ding an sich, a thing as it, in itself and of itself doesn't really exist. If, if there's a... If there's an artwork that seems to be disturbingly, uh, uh, say, about ch child eroticism, a lot of people would say that is disgusting, that is wrong, that is bad, that is wrong. If someone said to you, actually, this was just made by someone who was deeply abused as a child, and it's there coming to terms with it, you go, that's really important and interesting. <laughs> that's a very interesting work of art. The actual knowledge of who made it completely transforms something, even though it is molecularly exactly the same thing. So knowing that a book that says this about the Holocaust is written by a Jew or knowing it's written by a German matters. And, and this is true of, of, of all things in art. So, so when you know that George Eliot is a woman and you're a Victorian, does it alter your view of Middlemarch if you'd thought George Eliot was a man? I don't know. It probably does. And vice versa and all the way around. Um, uh, this may be a bit of a... Uh a bit of a twist, but I, and I think you might have said teenage Stephen, but I'm, I would like you, if, if possible, to reprise just a little of the spirit of that letter that you wrote to, in this case, young Stephen. Oh, goodness. Yes. Um, well, I, I was asked to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to write a, a letter to my young self by a I think it was, a, it was a gay magazine, in fact, it was reprinted in The Guardian, though. I can't remember exactly what I said, but it was on the basis of the fact that um, it so happened that I wrote a letter to my future self when I was 14. And it was a very angry and a very convinced letter saying, I know you will blush when you read this, I know you will think that I'm being hysterical, I know you think that the world is now about this, that, and the other, but I know where I'm writing from now is right, that who I am now is right, that what I feel now is the truth, and that every day I grow away from this moment and this age is a betrayal of who I am. I had this very peculiar sense of the, um, the primacy of... of the emotional world of the adolescent. When nature and poetry and love first explode in you, it, it, it makes you, uh, or unmakes you perhaps, but it certainly transforms you. And I was, I suppose, 
much as, again, as I love the digital world, one of the good fortunes I had about being born when I was is there was no internet, there was nothing to endorse or vindicate who I was or how I was except literature. There was, there was nothing else but the library to tell me that I was not alone. Now, rock music didn't tell me I wasn't alone. It, it, it might have done to people like me later, or I might have been able to overlook or change gender names or, 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 or that sort of thing in, in, a, in a rock lyric and say, oh yes, that does apply to me. But for the direct experience of lives similar to mine and the intensities and the pitch of, 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 of life as I felt it, there was literature. And, and at the age of 14, this had all happened to me in, in, in that way that every, every month is, is five years when you're that age. And so I, um, I wrote this letter to myself. And then the, a year or two ago, um, I, I wrote a letter back. Um, and in, in it, I, I pitied the abject misery of myself then, but I admired his ferocity his certainty, his, as, as we would now say, authenticity, the, the, the primacy he gave to emotion um, and the rawness and nakedness of his feelings. And um, I'm sometimes accused or indeed complimented on being uh, I'm not, not intellectual, because I'm, I'm not an intellectual in that sense as a noun, but of being intelligent or of being learned or of being rational or logical. And I'm, I'm happy to think I might be any one of those things, but I have never believed anything other than that feeling comes before thought, um, and that feeling makes us who we are, and that the emotions are a shortcut um, that are reliable. They can be unreliable too, but, but what, one thing they can't do is lie. You can't, you can't feel unhappy and say, no, I don't feel unhappy. If you're unhappy, you are unhappy. If you love, you love. You have to recognize what it is you're feeling, but, but feeling comes first. And I think, as, as, a, as an adolescent, I knew that. And so I was hugging myself and saying, it's, it's all going to be okay. It will be fine. You'll be amazed at how lucky your life will turn out to be. You will be amazed that actually the world does not belong to the strong, rugby-playing, thoughtless and unkind and rejecting people. The, the world belongs to, to you if you want it to. It belongs to writers and artists. It belongs to kindly people, to cheerful people, to people who want to help. And actually there isn't so much to despair about. There is room in the world for you, so long as you allow yourself to believe it and don't sink into a, an attitude of, of self-pity self and pessimism. That's sort of what I wrote. Tell you what, if we do Z, then it means we've finished. Yeah. So why don't we, why don't we, why don't we hold that for another time and pick it up again? Okay, <laughs> that's a good deal. I like um, that. I think it's been the highlight of my festival, and I'm deeply grateful oh, to you. Thank, thank you very much.